Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing some resin coating on coasters. Um, obviously you're going to need your, your resin. I use stone coat countertop. It's an epoxy resin, two part. It's mixed one to one. So you go by volume on this, not weight. It makes a big difference because your hardener is actually a lot thicker and heavier, which is this one here, and it weighs more. So part A is the hardener, part B is your resin. Um, definitely get yourself one of these. Nice little respirator, stops you breathing in the toxic fumes. All resin is toxic. Ed will kill you dead. It's only a matter of time. Um, gloves. These are just latex rubber gloves. Nitrile ones are better, but these will do for what I'm doing. A couple of stirring sticks. And a cup to mix it into. So what I shall do, put all this stuff on. Don't you just love that sound? Rubber gloves. Okay, what we'll do is use part A usually, because it's thinner. I'll mix up 125 mil. But I've got some other bits and pieces to do, so I might go 150 of each. Okay, so... Doo -doo. Just make sure you get to the line, 150. I'll pour that into my bigger cup. If I had a bigger measuring container, I could have just put it all in together. That would have been fine. Get it all out of the bottom. enough. Okay, part A, which is the thickest stuff. It's 150ml. In total, that will give me 300ml of resin. got 24 coasters to do and some other little round MDF thing that I'm doing which will probably end up being a clock or something like that okay scrape all that out Okay, near enough is pretty much close enough with this stuff. Then we mix it. Just go slow. Otherwise you'll fill it full of air bubbles and it will drive you nuts, trust me. Scrape the sides, make sure it gets thoroughly mixed. Make sure you scrape the bottom. That usually takes three or four minutes. So rather than you all sit here watching me stir a cup of resin, I'll 
cut it here and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, the resin is now mixed. Been stirring that for about three, four minutes. It seems to mix in really well. So what I usually do, see if I can get around this camera, is just use the paddle pop stick. Put about that much on each coaster. Okay. Which is that much. Then I get one of my fingers and just spread it right across the coaster. It all spreads out. Because with resin, it won't go over the edges and things like that if there's no resin there for it to move on. So, scoop some off the top, run it down the edges. Like so. Try to do it over the top of another coaster while I'm doing it so any drips lands on another coaster. You're not wasting resin that way. Okay, so once you've got all the edges done, you're um, pretty much good to go on your next one. Just make sure they are flat and level, otherwise it all pours off. This one here is one I've resin previously, tell by the gloss on it. And it um, obviously missed a bit here and there. So what I've done is sanded it with um, 80 grit sandpaper, just to scuff it up a bit. That way the new coating of resin over the top will stick to it. So you just do the same thing. Grab a scoop of it. And spread it out. And hopefully this time round, it should work. Now all of these coasters were wiped down with alcohol just to make sure there was no greasy fingerprints and things like that because resin will not stick to it anywhere where there's oils or silicons and things like that you got no hope of it sticking to it so just make sure they're clean dust free and you got less chances of it going wrong for you Okay, just recut the edges and that's good to go. What I usually do is add a little bit more on like that and that'll just self level as it goes anyway. If you put too much on it pours all over the edges, drips all over your table and you waste it, and resin isn't cheap. Okay, so rather than me show you all 20 odd of these, I'll cut it here, and we'll come back to popping bubbles later on. Now, I forgot to mention, working time on this resin is about 45 minutes or so. So, you need to get in quick and get it all done. Otherwise, it starts going all thick and hardens up as you're trying to get it to spread.
spread out. So the quicker you can do it, the better. I also tend to make just a little bit too much resin than what I actually need in case I have to touch up little bits and add a little bit more on and things like that which doesn't go to waste anyway because I actually have little moulds like that that I pour the excess stuff that I've got left over pour into that and make little key rings and other bits and pieces out of so comes in handy if you've got some moulds there laying around that way you don't waste any resin that you're left with you can always make something else out of it okay now I'll cut that and show you bubble popping later okay guys we're about 25 to 30 minutes in all the coasters are coated in resin. Now we're going to pop bubbles. So I just used one of these. Nice, small, easy to do. Wire it up. And then just keep about an inch away. Two inches. Just so you don't burn the resin. Because if you burn the resin, you're going to notice it when it's dried. So you just go over it. Any little bubbles that you can see, they'll all pop. <clears throat> now what I usually do is I'll look at all different angles with light and just make sure all your surface is coated with the resin and any bits that aren't you can just move the resin around while it's still wet to coat the bits that it's missed or add a little bit more Realistically, if you want these to turn out right, first go, you've really got to babysit them for like an hour or so. Because you'll see tiny little bits that you've just missed. Or where the resin hasn't stuck to it real good. No biggie. You can always add a little bit more from the drips that are running down underneath it you're gonna get little drips so just use a little paddle pop stick that way you can scoop any drips out from underneath and if you need it for filling any of the other ones you still can so just keep checking at all different angles shine lights on it at different angles too that helps you can see any little tiny bubbles and things like that definitely try to do it in a dust free environment no windows open no doors open if any wind will blow it all in and spoil your day Another little trick I found also is if you're in a really cold environment if you use casting resin it hardens a lot slower than your stone cake countertop stuff 
which gives it a chance for any little air bubbles to work their way out over a couple of days. It's not too bad if you're in a nice warm environment, but resin really likes about 25 degrees Celsius, something like that. So if it's only 12 or 13, if you use casting resin, uh, definitely helps. Just sets a lot slower. Gives the air bubbles a chance to release real easy. Okay, so just babysit these for about 20 minutes. Just keep blowing the flame across it. Over time, tiny little air bubbles will appear. No big deal, you just pop them again. And that should be roughly about it for that. Alright guys, if you've got any questions, um, just leave them in the comments, I'll get to them. Thank you very much for watching. You have an awesome day, and I hope this helped. Bye for now. Just a quickie before I go, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Cy, Frosty Eye Candy, G at G Paws, and Sheldon at Shell Rock Art. They're amazing artists, and I'll link their pages in the descriptions for you. Also, a quick shout out to Beth, Kath, and Christy. They're also amazing artists. Um, drop by our page and have a quick look and you'll be able to see their artworks as well. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye for now.